if you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, you know that I own a whole lot of cast iron. Probably over a hundred pieces. It's about the only thing I cook with. And I got these little cast iron. Uh, they're, they're really supposed to be a serving tray, but I'm going to use them to make a bread recipe a little later on. So these are relatively small. They're, I think that the actual inner part here where you can actually put food is only six, a little more than six inches long, about four inches wide and about an inch and a half deep. Then they got these little handles on the end. But as I was getting ready to season these, I realized I had not done a video on this. And one of the things that people are always amazed about is like when I fry eggs or pancakes and cast iron, like nothing ever sticks. And this is the trick. So what I've done is I've set my oven to 425 degrees. So I'm preheating the oven to 425. I like to use, and right now I've actually got uh, extra virgin olive oil. I will alternate every now and then. So I might pre-season these with extra virgin olive oil two or three times, and then I'll do vegetable oil once or twice, and then I'll do the olive oil. Then I might use some other kind of oil, but the procedure is the same, and it's literally critical. Although these have some sort of a seasoning on them, it appears, I, I can just tell by looking at it, it's not going to be good enough. Maybe good enough for bread, but not good enough for most of the stuff I make. So I poured some in here, and a lot of places are going to tell you don't overdo it. Well, I don't always follow recommended procedures, and most of the stuff I do. And over the years of doing this, this ain't something I just started, but over the years of doing this, I really want to learn on my own. I want to find out on my own, like, why shouldn't I use too much oil? And let me tell you why. There isn't a reason why. Use as much oil as you want to use. <laughs> it's not made a bit of difference in the cast iron I have. Um, and, and I've had to season all of it numerous times because I maintain I've been using it for seven years now. I went strictly to ca cast iron seven years ago. Haven't looked back. Um, so once the oil's in there, I basically take paper towel, I dab it in oil, it's going to soak up most of it, but there's going to be some left, and I basically just wipe it around. Make sure it covers everything, every little nook and cranny, make sure it covers every part on the outside also. And including the sides and the bottom. You're not, just, you're not just seasoning the part that the food touches. You're seasoning all of it. I don't normally do this in front of a camera. So this is being a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be. But you're going to season literally every part of this cast iron. Handles, everything. Bottom, all of it. Even like the little inner part of this hole. You want to get it in there too. Both sides, even where your fingers are touching. If you don't want a little bit of oil on your fingers, you probably shouldn't own cast iron. Okay, so here's what we look like now. You can see it's shiny got oil on it every surface just do all the other ones too same way now there's a chart online that a couple of years ago and I'm going to mention this because I, I see a lot of people recommend it in other cast iron groups there's a chart online that tells you like what temperature your oven should be if you use vegetable oil, what temperature your oven should be if you use you know, olive oil, what temperature your oven should be if you use, you, you get the idea. 
when I first got into cast iron, I, I found that list. I don't know if someone recommended it or I found it on my own. I found that list. And for the longest time, I followed that list, maybe for a year. And let me tell you what happened. I realized it didn't really work. <laughs> you would get large portions of your cast iron that wasn't really seasoned, even though you were using the correct temperature and the correct amount of time and all that stuff. And I suspect that it's not the person that put the list together's fault. What I really suspect is that there's just so many different... Um, there's literally so many different brands of these oils, and they're all just slightly different. I missed the spot. I saw it, so I fixed it. So that's what I think it is. I think that the evaporative temperature of all these different brands of oil are not consistent brand to brand. So what I started doing is I just started experimenting kind of on my own. Um, I used to use 400 degrees and I kind of found that that worked for some of the oils, but not all the oils. I wanted to set it like, I don't have to remember all these different temperatures. I'm going to use one temperature and it's going to work every single time. So what I come up with is 425 degrees for 75 minutes. That's the other thing too. Most places will tell you 45 minutes or 60 minutes. I think that chart would give you like a time range for, you know, the oil you were using. I wanted a remember one temperature, remember one time value, and it always worked no matter which oil I used. And I come up with it. 425 degrees, 75 minutes. I've been using that for three or four years now. Never once had an issue. Alright, so basically what I'm doing, I'm going to pause this because my oven's only at like 408 degrees right now. I'll bring you back when it gets to 425. Alright, so now we are at bake 425 degrees. You can see what we're at temperature now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set a kitchen timer. 75 minutes. We're at 75 minutes. It's already counting down. The few seconds it takes me to set this camera back up and put that in there isn't really going to affect it that much. Of course, I got to readjust the camera. All right. So now what you're going to do, you're going to put this in your oven. It don't matter which rack. I've actually got some other pieces in there upside down. So make sure that's the top. You put it in there upside down. Close the door. Now here's probably the most important thing. Once you close that door, do not open that door at all. When the timer goes off, you're going to shut the oven off, but you're going to leave the door closed. You're not going to open it. You're not going to open it for a few hours. You want the cast iron that's in that oven to gradually return back to temperature. So what I usually do is I do cast iron when I've got a period of about, you know, it takes 75 minutes that you're actually baking your cast iron, that you're baking the seasoning on. And then I usually allow about two or three hours for it to cool down. So we're looking at three to four hours of time is how long your oven door needs to remain closed. I will bring you back at that part later and show you the results. Okay, I thought I'd bring you back now. This is the important part. As soon as your timer goes off, you're going to silence the timer, shut the oven off, and then walk away. Come back in two or three hours when the pans have had time to cool down on their own to room temperature, and then you can open up the door. But make sure you do not open up the door until then. So I'm going to silence the timer. Then I'm going to shut the stove off. 
then simply walk away. It's been about three and a half hours now, and I can tell from the top of the oven that it's still a little warm. The door is cold. The very top is slightly warmer than my body temperature, but that is probably good enough. So I'm gonna open this up really quick, take one out, and check it out. You will see a place that looks shinier than the rest of it. Now it looks like it's wet, but it's not. And there might be some other places that look that way, but it's not wet. So once you pull it out, that's what you're gonna look for. If there's any place that's wet, you didn't leave it in there long enough. Because what happens is, now there's actually still some oil on the stove. I never cleaned it off and there. I got some of that on here. But what happens is, as the oil evaporates, it kind of hardens and it creates a protective coating. And that's actually what we need to do. For every kind of oil that we use, it just needs to evaporate off the pan and turn into a hard coating and that's exactly what is done but that's what we're after so now that this is done i usually prefer to do these two or three times um and then that builds builds causes the coating to actually build up thicker um but i've got some bread i want to make and these will be fine for baking that bread so anyways I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found this content useful. The secret ingredient is 425 degrees, 75 minutes, alternate oils. If you use uh, virgin olive oil today, use vegetable oil the next time, the time after that, maybe canola oil, or you can just alternate between two or three. But 425 degrees, 75 minutes, that gets it for every brand of oil that I've used. Thanks for watching. God bless you. God bless your families. God bless your homestead.